There's no greater gift that anyone can give To give his life so someone else can live But when the water made us came from heaven above He gave his own end showed to us when he gave us his unending love Ooh, the God of all creation gave his only son and took our place and died so that we could come and live with God Forevermore in heaven above, He gave His unending love. All that He had, all that He had, He gave to us. All that He made, all that He made, He made for us. All that He. showed to us when he gave us his unending love Ooh, there is no greater gift that anyone can give to give his life so someone else can live when the came from heaven above He gave His unending love All that He had All that He had He gave to us All that He made All that He made He made for us All that He showed to us when he gave us his unending love Ooh, the God of all creation gave his only son and took our place and died so that we could come Live with God forevermore in heaven above. He gave his unending love. All that he had, all that he had, he gave to us. All that he made, all that he made, he made for us. All showed to us when he gave us his unending love all that he had all that he had he gave to us all that he made all that he made he made for us all that he showed to us when he gave us his unending love when he gave us his unending love Ooh. amen hallelujah we welcome you to another episode of just like him and we believe that this day you're going to be encouraged by the Word of God and strengthened because God's Word always encourages us. Amen. That's Amen. right. 
And the song that we just sang was talking about, you know, God's unending love, God's unconditional love and God's everlasting love that he sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. And we've been discussing yeah. all that also about the love of God from the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, how God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us. That's right. That's the greatest kind of love that you could ever know. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no other love apart from the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's unconditional. And I love the lines of this song that says, He gave us His unending love. That's right. That is the love that, you know, it doesn't fade away. It doesn't turn, you know, when things get rough. That love is still going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, today you feel like, you feel like some situation is hopeless and you feel like your life is miserable. Well, today you can know that the love of Jesus can turn all those things around. Mm, that's right. It can turn around. I mean, there are people who have really testified and said that when they heard those three words, God is love, it just made a difference in them. Mm. And it's not for some people. You can know that too. Yeah. Because God's love is for everybody who receives it. Yeah. It's truly unconditional. Yeah. And you know, we've been going to the scripture, John mm. 3, 16. Yeah. Maybe you've heard the scripture, maybe you've not. But this word is just so powerful. Mm. And like we said earlier, you know, maybe you don't know the love of God. Maybe you think God is far away from you and He's only for some people. But today, I'm here to encourage you and we're here to encourage you that God's love is just for you as well. Amen. Let's read that scripture one more time in John 3, 16. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm. Everlasting life. That is the kind of life that God wants you to have. And, you know, maybe you're feeling like your life is miserable today. But God wants to give you His everlasting life. Yeah. It's really simple, you know, to receive Jesus. Mm. It's, it's simple. It's not difficult. Yeah. yeah. And we also talked about, you know, why, why did God love us so much? Mm. We said, like, in the beginning, the Bible talks about when man disobeyed God, you know, we, sin entered into the world and we received this sinful nature mm. that separated us from God. And so we could not have a right relationship with God anymore because we, you know, used to look at God as, you know, God, and maybe He's an angry God and maybe He doesn't love me. And so man was separate and God didn't like that. Mm. That's why He wanted to make a way for us to enjoy relationship with Him. That's right. Because in God, there is true love, there is true peace, there is true joy and um it's actually an exciting life when you think about the life yeah, of God. That's right. And also we see that God's love is unconditional love. Mm. It doesn't, you know, say, well, God never says, I'm going to love you today. And because you messed up, I'm going to, you know, well, my love is going to stop. Mm. But God doesn't do that. God's love is just, it's the same all the time. In fact, that's the reason why Jesus came for messed up people like you and me. Yeah. I mean, he didn't want to see us, you know, wallowing in sin and continue in it. That's the reason he laid the weight of the sin of all the world, all the people yeah. upon Jesus. And Jesus literally became sin. The Bible talks about it. He became sin for us. Everything we did, all the mess ups that we did and, you know, the failures that we did, God put it all on Jesus's account so that we can just enjoy the righteousness of God, the abundance of God. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You know, there's another verse that describes God's love. It's unconditional. And what I see about God is that the reason He gave us Jesus was not because we had done something good or because we deserved it. Mm -hmm. He gave us Jesus, well, when we didn't even deserve it. We were people who were just not even thinking about God. But He mm -hmm. said, in spite of all of that, I'm still going to give you my son. And see what the scripture describes his love as. It's everlasting as well. It's unconditional, but it, it doesn't mm. change as well. It's beautifully <coughs> described in the scripture in Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Jeremiah 31 3 says, it says, 
the Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mm. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. Yeah. I love the lines where it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mm. Now, this is God speaking to us. He's saying, I love you with an everlasting love. Yeah. My love is not going to change. Mm. It's going to be there for you all the time. Maybe you've messed up in life. Maybe you've had relationships that have only been based on what you can give and what each other can get. Yeah. But God's kind of love, it's everlasting. Mm. It's, a, it's a love that gives, keeps on giving. It, it doesn't hold anything back. It's just freely out there for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we mentioned earlier, how the love of God was shown to us when Jesus died on the cross. And the Amen. reason He died on the cross was that so that we could come into a relationship with God. Mm. Even the lines of the song, it says, um, there is no greater gift that anyone can give than to lay down his life for someone else. Yeah. And Jesus laid down his life for you when you were not even thinking about him, you, you didn't even deserve him, but he said, I'm still gonna come just for you. Mm. And he had you in mind. I mean, yeah. he died for the sins of the whole world, yeah. but he was thinking of you as an individual. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how much his love, love is so good. Yeah, and I love this part. It says, um, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mm. And the rest of it says, therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn you. So Jesus is saying, or God is saying here, I draw you with my loving kindness. That means, you know, God doesn't want us to come to him because of, you know, because of hate or because he's an angry God. But God wants us, he draws us to him with his loving kindness. That's how good he is. Mm. And we mentioned also in the previous episode that God is love. Everything about God is love. In, in God, you know, or rather he is love. So everything about him, you know, he gives to us because he loves us. He does things for us because he loves us. And so he draws even, he draws us to him with his loving kindness. That's right. And, um, you know, there's a beautiful example in the Bible that shows us how God drew a lady who was not, she was not a person who had a good past and mm. she had messed up in her relationships. And it's a beautiful story that's described in the book of John chapter four. Yeah. And there are just a few verses I want to read from that. You might say, now this part is so amazing. It says here, he draws us with his loving kindness. Yeah. He doesn't draw us with um, confusion. He doesn't draw us through um, condemnation. He doesn't draw us through, um, you know, kind of like a controlling manner. Mm. It says oh, here, he doesn't yeah. even, you know, point fingers at you and say, because you did all this, you're messed up. So, you know, you, you need to live right and all that mm. stuff. God doesn't, you know, condemn us. Like we said before, you know, if you're going through a situation like this where you're saying, well, I've messed up and I've done even the story that we're about to read. I've done all these bad things and, you know, will God really forgive me? Does he love me that much? Or maybe mm. I'm not worthy to receive God's gift, God's gift of love. But let's read this story and yeah, see. It's, it's, amazing. it's truly amazing. Yeah. And maybe you can relate to this story as well because this lady, she had failed in her relationships. Mm. And going back to John, we see the story. The full story is mentioned. Actually, it's, it's the whole chapter, John, that mentions this whole story. But we're talking about those last lines of Jeremiah that says, with loving kindness, have I drawn you? Mm. And God says that he draws us with his loving kindness. So here we see a story about a lady who was messed up. The Bible says that she had, you know, she had messed up in relationships. She had five husbands and she was totally in a messed up state. And so we see on one fine day, Jesus decides to go to this town called Samaria and he takes his disciples with him and he's thirsty at this point. It's a long journey. And so he decides, well, I need a drink of water. So he comes to the well and there's this lady coming to the well and Jesus asks her, you know, can you give me a drink of water? Mm. And she gets all, you know, well, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan and all this kind yeah. of different thing. She says, well, I can't give you water because you're a Jew and things like that. Yeah. But anyway, 
Jesus doesn't go to argue with her about what she said, but he says something so beautiful in verse 10. This is John chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus says, he tells her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. Now he says, If you knew who I am, you, you would begin to say, Man, this is Jesus. He's coming to me and trying to give me a life that nobody else can give me. But she didn't mm. understand that. No. She asked him, well, living water, what does living water mean? I mean, are you greater than the people who built this well? And mm. Jesus never goes to argue with her. He continues on to say in verse 14, he tells her, that whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water mm. springing up into everlasting life. Yeah. So again, just to break it down, Jesus is mentioning to her about salvation. You can have this gift that I'm talking about. You can have a life that is full of joy and peace because that's what's included in everlasting life. Yeah. But we see that this lady was still not sure. And then Jesus goes on a little deeper and he tells her, you know, you've, you've not had a very good past and your relationships have not been too good, but he doesn't condemn her at all. Mm. And he starts ministering life to her. He just starts telling her, you know, God has a good plan for you. God, he wants to give you this new life that you've never had. And in the end, she gets so excited, yeah. right? She's so excited. Just imagine here, Jesus comes and she's all messed up. Mm. But Jesus comes and says, I want to give you everlasting life. Yeah. You've not had a good life. Your life has been all messed up. And she says, and I need this. Mm. And so she runs back and it says she goes back and calls the whole, I guess the whole city probably. Because yeah. she realizes, man, I've never had a life like Jesus is talking about. Mm. And then she receives it. And you know what's amazing? Jesus stays in that town for two more days, yeah. just ministering life. That's right. And yeah. I, what I just noticed from this whole story and um, Jesus coming and meeting this woman, you know, of even a different um, background than Jesus was. You know, it says here that Jesus, he didn't just go, like you said, argue with her. Mm. He didn't condemn her also for what she had done. You know, uh, he just loved her. Right. And I also noted this. She was free from guilt and shame. When Jesus ministered life to her, she was free from guilt and shame. Yeah, and she probably had a lot of guilt and shame. She did. And she didn't have good relationships. Yeah. See, yeah. that's the thing about the love of God. He sets us free from guilt and shame. And then also, she was set free from her past to go and influence an entire city. This is how powerful one impact, one relationship with Jesus did to this woman. She was, you know, set free from guilt and shame, and she could go and influence an entire city. Also, the life or her life was radically changed completely for her to go and do such. So it just goes to show that from that scripture that God or Jesus came and drew her with loving kindness. Yeah. He didn't draw her with condemnation. He just came and said, you can have a new life. Yeah. Never condemned her because she had a bad past. No. He just came and showed her so much of love. Yeah, and in, in another scripture in the New Testament, it talks about how God draws us to Him with His goodness. Mm. It's God's goodness that leads us to repentance. If God just kept on accusing us and condemning us for the wrong things, we wouldn't be drawn to Him, mm. would we? No. It's like even, just say for example in school, a person just shows you love by sharing things with you. And you're drawn to that person because of his good, his or her good qualities. There's only motives. I mean, there's good motives behind it. There's good that. motives behind it. And God has all good motives behind it. Mm. He wants um, us to enjoy a life with Him full of love. So this woman, man, she was set free yeah. and she was delivered. This is a good example of how God draws us with His loving kindness. Yeah, that's he right. doesn't draw us because of... Um, our past or because we deserve it. He yeah. draws us because of His goodness and His loving kindness. And He also changes us. He mm. changes our life. He, yeah. he gives us a new life. That's right. And two words that can just describe God is that God is a God of love. Yeah. And that He wants to love you too, just like He did for this woman. 
and you probably say, well, I've messed up even greater than this woman. I mm -hmm. mean, is my is my sin too great for God to to love me? I mean, I don't even deserve this. Well, the truth is, you know, there's another scripture that tells us. It's in Romans five, Romans five eight. Yeah. Let's just quickly see that. It shows us that, you know, even when we didn't deserve it, that God loved us very much. Romans 5, 8 says, But God showed His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm. So while we were in sin, we were not even thinking of Him. He died for us. Yeah. That shows us that God loves us unconditionally. Yeah. He loves us with His everlasting love. Mm. That's how He drew this lady and that's how He wants to draw you too. Mm. And maybe you're out there, you don't know this God kind of love. You don't know that it is an unconditional love, mm. a love that's not based on um, what you've done or anything. Yeah. But today you can know this kind of love. And all you got to do is pray a very simple prayer and the author of love is going to come and live in your heart. Yeah. And his name is Jesus. And the best part about it is you can have a relationship with him. Yeah. Amen. So let's pray. You can repeat this prayer after me and let's just say, Father God, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for dying for me on the cross, for dying for me on the cross, sending your son, Jesus, sending your son, Jesus, who did this great work for me, who did this great work for me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love, for your everlasting love, your unconditional love, your unconditional love. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, change my life, change my life. Give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. I receive you into my life. I receive you into my Forgive life. Forgive me of all the wrongs that I've done. Forgive me for all the wrongs that I've done. Thank you. Thank you. I receive it. I receive By it. By faith. By faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now you can believe today that the author of love has come to live inside your heart yeah. and his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And be free from your past today. God wants to set you free. Yeah. Amen. Amen.